Hi everyone, it's Dr. Crad. Join me today because I'm super excited to be freeing this lovely patient from her Coke bottle glasses. I mean, look at these things. The glasses are nearly a minus 15. Her prescription is so bad that she's not a candidate for any laser vision correction procedure. Not LASIK, not SMILE, not PRK. Her prescription is so high that it wouldn't be safe. We need a better and safer option. Today we'll be fixing her vision using the Evo ICL lens implant. The Evo ICL is a lens implant made from a mix of collagen and polymer. You can order this lens with the patient's prescription and then implant it in the eye. As a cataract and refractive surgeon who implants lenses in the eye all the time, implanting the Evo ICL will be the easiest step of fixing my patient's vision. The more challenging part is selecting the correct size and strength ICL. You see, the Evo ICL comes in four different sizes. We want the ICL to fit perfectly in the patient's eye. We don't want it too small, which could allow the lens to swim or move around in the eye, and we don't want the lens too large, which can crowd the structures in the eye, potentially causing some eye health problems. There are different ways to calculate the appropriate size of the ICL, but the outcomes vary from patient to patient. There are often surprises after implantation, and there isn't a perfect way to predict the best ICL size. So I measure my patient with every device I have. I use many different machines, getting multiple measurements so that I have multiple opinions on the ICL size. As a high myope, her eye is on the larger side, and using the recommended nomograms, the ICL size recommended to me is between a 12.6 millimeter and a 13.2 millimeter. In order to narrow it down further, I want to use a new tool called ICL Guru to help me select the appropriate size lens implant. You need a UBM machine to perform an ultrasound of the front of the eye for this. This one here is the Absolute by Lumibird. This video is not sponsored by anyone. There's a small water-filled balloon at the tip of the ultrasound probe. After placing numbing drop on the patient's eye, you rest this soft water balloon on the eye and it'll take all the measurements automatically. You then upload your scans to ICL Guru and it'll give you an analysis with recommended sizing. The ICL Guru is recommending that I size down to a 12.6 millimeter ICL, otherwise the lens may be too tight. We measure how tight the lens is after surgery by assessing the lens vault. The vault is how high the ICL sits on top of the patient's natural lens. And a high vault suggests a tight lens. A low vault suggests a loose lens. Ideally, we want it under 900 and more than 200. According to ICL Guru, our highest chance of success will be with a 12.6 millimeter diameter Evo ICL. So this is the size we will select. We'll order it with her prescription. And after surgery, we'll check the lens vault together and see if we made the right decision or if we should have went with the larger size. The procedure is straightforward. A couple of incisions are made and still viscoelastic in the eye to create space for the lens implant and to protect the cornea. After implanting the lens, you tuck each of the foot plates posterior to the iris, then try to thoroughly remove as much viscoelastic from the eye as possible and as gently as possible. Seal your incisions and you're done. Star Surgical recommends removing viscoelastic from the eye by flushing it out with BSS-filled syringes. Some surgeons, however, implant the Evo ICL without using viscoelastic so that there's none to be removed at the end. Alternatively, some surgeons will remove the viscoelastic with bimanual INA through two paracentesis. If you're an Evo ICL surgeon, leave a comment below about your favorite technique. We did both surgeries on the same day. Fortunately, they went great. After the Evo ICLs are implanted in the eye and appropriately positioned, we need to make sure we evacuate all the viscoelastic from the eye to minimize the chance of an eye pressure spike in the postoperative period. Fortunately, her eye pressure stayed within normal range after surgery. Next, I'm going to show you how her ICLs look at the slit lamp on day one after surgery, and I'll also show you her actual postoperative vaults to see if the sizing that we chose for her ICLs was as predicted. Here I'm making sure that the incisions are sealed and watertight. I stress test the eye by tapping. I'm making sure that the eye pressure is normal and that there's no egress of fluid. Here are her eyes day one after surgery. 
Thankfully, she's doing great on post-op day one. She will likely improve day by day. We undercorrected her astigmatism intentionally because although she had a little bit of astigmatism in her prescription, she was used to her vision wearing spherical contact lenses. And with the Toric Evo ICL implants, there's added risk of lens rotation after surgery, and we didn't want that. So we erred on the side of undercorrecting her astigmatism. Here I'm using my OCT to measure her vaults. Here is the Evo ICL and below is her natural lens. The vault is easily measured by placing digital calipers from the posterior side of her Evo lens to the anterior side of her natural lens. And here are the vaults. They are perfect. I'm super happy that I sized down from the nomogram. The ICL Guru is a really nice tool. At one point we had some delays trying to connect to it with our Absolute device, but it's a new tool and they keep improving it. And so if you're going to be implanting Evo ICLs in the future, it's worth considering getting a UBM such as the Absolute to help you get good measurements. I hope you liked this video and found it helpful. I appreciate you watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.